Hey everyone, welcome back to another video, and today we're talking about the new 3 liter twin turbo engine from Stellantis that has already been released in various capacities and on certain models. I've been covering this engine since rumors started surfacing in 2019, and it's already debuting in the Jeep Grand Wagoneer and Wagoneer as of right now. So we'll look at what we know about the power, fuel economy, performance, and reliability of these 3 liter Hurricane engines, check out the crate engines, compare them to the Hemis, and see if it will be a suitable replacement for those beloved Hemis. So let's get right into it. If you've been watching my channel or following Dodge at all this year, you'll know that this is the last call not just for Hellcats, but for all Hemi-powered L cars that Dodge builds, as you can see in a quote from Dodge CEO Tim Kaniskis. So this includes the 5.7 liter, 6.4 liter, and 6.2 liter supercharged Hemis. The main reasons for cancelling them would be that Stellantis wants to improve their engine technology, as the Hemis have been around for a long time. They want to change customer mindset as they try to move to hybrids and electrics. And probably the biggest factor, following the tighter emissions controls that are affecting the automotive industry. If you're still not aware by now, Stellantis has released a 3 liter turbocharged inline 6 cylinder engine that has the code name Hurricane. Also there are two versions, the standard output and high output, also called a 510 sometimes for the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Visually, you can actually tell the difference as the twin turbo writing on the sides, as well as the border in the center, are black on the high output, and they're silver on the standard output. The Hurricane has a dual overhead camshaft design, four valves per cylinder, direct injection, and variable intake and camshaft timing. The turbochargers are low inertia, high flow models, each feeds three cylinders, increasing responsiveness. The engine has direct fuel injection with a single pump for the standard output model, and twin pumps for the high output model. Incoming air is cooled by an engine-mounted intercooler before it enters the intake manifold, making the air denser which helps for better performance. An electric pump is also used to cool the turbochargers after the engine is shut off, and each engine comes standard with start-stop technology. So the first major question regarding the Hurricane in this video is what vehicles will it be used in? Currently looking at 2023 models, there is a standard output available in the 2023 Jeep Wagoneer Carbide and Series 3, while the base model in Series 2 get the 5.7 liter Hemi standard. Moving to the Grand Wagoneer, the base continues with the 6.4 liter Hemi, but all the models up from there get the high output Hurricane standard, with the 6.4 sometimes being a $0 option if desired. There have also been reports that Dodge will release both internal combustion engines and battery electric powertrains going forward in late 2023, and those internal combustion engine models will be powered by both of these engines, standard output and high output. So that's for cars like the Dodge Charger and Challenger. Of course, this isn't confirmed yet, as we've only seen Dodge mention their 340 and 440 EV powertrain so far for the Charger. You'd have to expect it to also find its way under the hood of the Jeep Grand Cherokee and Dodge Durango in the near future, as Stellantis likely spent millions or even billions to develop this thing, so they've got to get some use out of it to recoup their costs, and their window is slowly closing with the EVs looming. It's worth noting that the standard output Hurricane is the replacement for the 5.7 liter Hemi, the high output for the 6.4 liter, and the Banshee Propulsion System EV will be the Hellcat replacement, but we're not talking about that one today. So now let's look at the power and performance of both the 3 liter engines and the Hemis. The power numbers are there for you to see for the Jeeps, as that's the only model currently being sold with it that has been road tested. The 5.7 liter Hemi has 392 horsepower and 404 pound-feet of torque, while that Hurricane standard output comes with 420 horsepower and 468 pound-feet of torque. So that's 7.1% more horsepower and 15.8% more torque, or an improvement of 28 horsepower and 64 pound-feet of torque. The towing is very similar, around 10,000 pounds on the 5.7, and 10,000 pounds with the Hurricane and 4x2, or 9,850 pounds with 4x4. Both engines use an 8-speed automatic transmission. We also have some tested performance times that have been published. There's an oddly wide range of times for the 2022 5.7-liter Wagoneer models, with 0 to 60s of between 6.7 to 7.6 seconds, and the quarter mile in 15.1 to 15.8 seconds. This vehicle weighs 6,378 pounds. The Hurricane ups the ante by quite a bit more than I expected. So Motor Trend tested it with a 0 to 60 of 5.5 seconds, and the quarter mile in 14.1 seconds, so that's over a second quicker at least than the 5.7 liter, which is a substantial performance gain. Part of that could be that the Hurricane Wagoneers weigh 6,201 pounds, which is 177 pounds lighter than the 5.7 liter counterpart vehicle. The 6.4 liter Hemi under the hood of the Grand Wagoneer packs 471 horsepower and 455 pound-feet of torque, 
while that Hurricane high output makes 510 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque. So this time we're looking at 8.3% more horsepower and 9.9% more torque. Towing is rated at 9,850 for the 6.4 liter and 9,450 for the 3 liter. 2022 6.4 liter Grand Wagoneers were tested with a 0 to 60 in 5.4 to 5.7 seconds and the quarter mile in 13.9 to 14.1 seconds with a curb weight of 6,420 pounds. The 2023 with the 3 liter saw the 0 to 60 go down to 4.7 seconds and the quarter mile to 13.5 seconds. So again, that's between 7 tenths to 1 full second faster 0 to 60 and roughly half a second faster to the quarter mile with this new engine. How about the fuel economy, the major reason why Stellantis is discontinuing the Hemis? The 5.7 liter uses 89 octane fuel. For the 4x2 Wagoneer, EPA is rated at 16 MPG City, 22 Highway, and 18 combined. The 4x4 Wagoneer drops a bit to 15 MPG City, 20 Highway, and 17 overall. For the 3 liter engines, 89 octane fuel is also recommended, and the gas mileage goes up very slightly to 17 MPG City, 24 Highway, and 20 overall for the 4x2, and 16 city, 23 highway, and 19 combined MPG for the 4x4 models. So that translates to 11.1% better gas mileage on the 4x2s, and 11.7% better for the 4x4s. Keep in mind these figures are just on paper, and it's very hard to objectively test these due to a wide variety of traffic conditions and infrastructure in each different city or state. Research shows Americans drive 13,474 miles per year on average, so if we take the combined MPG for both city and highway, the 5.7 liter Hemi will cost someone $2,926.85 with the national average cost of mid-grade being $3.91 US dollars per gallon. The 3 liter Hurricane would cost you $2,634.17, so that would be a saving of only $292.68 annually. Looking at the 6.4 liter, 91 fuel octane is required. For 4x2 models, fuel economy is rated at 13 MPG City, 19 Highway, and 15 combined, while the Hurricane boosts those to 15, 21, and 17 combined. The 4x4 models on the 6.4 liter Hemi are 13, 18, 15 MPG combined, while the 3 liter high output is 14, 20, 17 combined. So this time that means it's 13.3% more economical for both the two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. Again, if we look at the annual costs, this time at $4.22 US per gallon for 91 octane, the 6.4 liter Hemi Grand Wagoneer will cost the average American $3,790.69 a year, while the Hurricane would be $3,344.72, $415.97 cheaper. Now we'll move on to crate engines. Recently announced at the 2022 SEMA show were some new Hurry Crate series engines. There are two versions, a Hurry Crate Cat 1 and Cat 3, referring to the severity of real life hurricanes. The numbers are still preliminary estimates for the crates. But the Cat 1 looks to offer 420 horsepower and 468 pound-feet of torque at 2500 RPM, so that is exactly the same numbers as the engine under the hood of the 2023 Jeep Wagoneer. The Cat 3 then goes up to 550 horsepower and 531 pound-feet of torque at just 3500 RPM, so that's way more than both the 6.4 liter Hemi and the current Grand Wagoneer Hurricane high output as well. In fact, that would be 13.4% more horsepower and 11.8% more torque, than the 6.4 liter Hemi that's in the Dodge Charger, Challenger, and Durango, Scat Packs, or SRT392 models. So to me, that means that in the next-gen internal combustion engine versions of those cars, they will use this Hurricane with likely far superior performance if the platform gets lighter, the cars weigh less, and if they have all-wheel drive available. Dodge also has plans to release a Hurry Crate X engine, which will be a racing-specific variation, and that will be the power plant for the next Mopar Drag Pack. The pricing, availability, and final specs will all be announced in 2023. The final point to discuss today would be the reliability and some pros and cons of this engine. Turbocharging is very common these days, allowing a smaller engine to have the power of a larger engine with better fuel efficiency, especially when it's fitted inside a smaller car. These engines work like a bigger one when the power is needed by forcing air into the engine during acceleration to burn more fuel. However, turbocharged engines have more parts, and they're more complex, so this could cause more problems for owners. It's hard to generalize reliability when this engine is so new though. Some auto manufacturers like Audi, BMW, and Porsche have lots of experience building these engines, so those are reliable over time, but I'm not so sure about Chrysler's experience here. This engine development began sometime before 2019, so this was before the Stellantis merger, so I'm not sure how much input Group PSA has, if any, since they do sell quite a few turbocharged cars, 
like the Peugeot 308 and 408. Overall, when looking at the pros and cons of a turbo engine like the Hurricane versus the Hemi, there is more torque at lower RPMs, and they are a bit more efficient, which means less money spent at the pumps, as we saw. On the downside, the turbocharger adds complexity to the engine, which means higher risk for potential problems, and replacing the turbocharger would be a very costly repair. Plus, this engine is also new and untested. Also, turbo engines usually require more maintenance because the smaller engine is working harder, operating with increased pressure and temperature inside the combustion chambers of the engine, so the internal components will have added strain and wear out faster. In general, a turbocharged engine is less forgiving and more sensitive to poor maintenance, like letting oil levels get low, using low quality oil, or taking too long between the oil changes. So to wrap up here, yes, the 3 liter turbocharged engine is here, and yes, it is replacing the Hemi V8s. As I mentioned, I expect this engine to eventually be rolled out to other North American products, like the next-gen Dodge Challenger, Dodge Charger, Jeep Grand Cherokee, and maybe even the Ram 1500. The turbocharged six-cylinder seems like a stepping stone for Stellantis as they aim for their 50% battery electric vehicle sales mix by the year 2030. As crushing as this is for all of us muscle car and V8 enthusiasts, Stellantis will continue to try to sell this engine to customers and win them over, arguing that you are getting more power and better fuel economy at the same time. So this won't sound the same as the V8s, and may not evoke the same emotions or excitement, but as we've seen from the Jeep Wagoneers and Grand Wagoneers, which aren't even performance vehicles, the Hurricane clearly outperforms the comparable Hemi by at least a second in the 0-60 to times, with nothing else changed besides the engine. So that's it for today, what do you think of the 3.0 liter Hurricane engine? Let me know down in the comments section below. As always, thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for all your Mopar news and content, and I'll see you in the next video.